right, so we're going to be looking at cost price versus selling price. All right. Now, important things to remember. Don't look at the diagram below. Just try and ignore that for a second. There's two lines here that I want you to have a look at. So here we go. Cost price, by definition, is the price to manufacture a product. Okay. What it costs you to manufacture a product or what it costs you to carry out a service. It doesn't have to be a physical thing. It can also be a service. But let's talk about physical things that we sell. All right. Products. So it's the price to manufacture this product. Okay. Cost price. And when people compare different products and businesses and their cost prices, it's always important to bring it down to a, a price per one unit. We can't compare... 12 items with three items. We can't compare the price of 12 items with the price of three items. It doesn't make sense. So when we work with cost price, we're always trying to bring the price down to a price for one unit. Um, you can then work your way back up from there. Once you've got the price for one unit, you can work your way back up. But if you don't have a price for one unit, for one unit it's hard to work your way down. Hold on a second. All right. Now, here we go. Is This is a diagram that um, needs to be considered when you're working out your cost price. All right. There are two parts to it. We have the production costs, which is this is the one that you guys are most familiar with. Okay. So your production costs here are the costs of specific materials and equipment used to make the product. So in, in making your product, these are the costs that you are going to uh, incur if you're buying things to make your product. All right. So those are the production costs. To produce something, those are production costs. All right. Now, this one underneath here, the running cost. This is the cost of all the other items that must be available um, for goods to be sold and business to function. So this doesn't necessarily mean that there are things going into producing your product. These are things on the side, outside of, of uh, the production um, items or materials, okay? Not materials that go into your product, but these are things that cost you in running your business, all right? Who's got an example of a running cost in producing an item? So when you produce an item, what could a running cost be for your business that produces an item. Is there anyone out there with a suggestion? What kind of running costs do you know of? The cost of all the other, uh, other items that your business needs to function <clears throat> besides what you need to build your product or make your product. What other running costs do you guys know? Anyone out there with an idea for running costs? Well, let me give you an example. If you uh, have a shoe factory and your factory makes shoes, what things do you need to run your factory? Never mind the items that you need to make shoes. What things do you need to keep that business going to run that factory Monday to Friday? These are, those are all your running costs. Who's got an example of a running cost? Electricity. All right, good, that's one. Water, all right, good. Water and electricity are common ones, yes. Uh, delivery, okay, vehicles. All right, you need vehicles to deliver things. Very good, I like that. And petrol to put in those vehicles, maintenance of those vehicles, yes. Okay, shelter, all right, now when we say shelter, uh, like Bianca mentioned below, a building to keep your business in. And then that building, obviously, you're going to need to pay rent. All right. So rent um, for shelter or rent for building. Okay. Yes, these are all running costs. Very good. Storage. Okay. Storage. Maybe your business needs storage. That could be a running cost. All right. Good. And I saw one with telephone. Okay, let's say telecoms. Telecoms. There could be fiber. There could be cell phones. It could be all kinds of things. Very good. Salaries. 
yeah, oh, you need you know, people make these things. You've got to pay these salaries. They don't make themselves, do they? All right, salaries. All right, excellent, guys. These are very good examples. Safety and security, license fees. Yeah, these are fantastic examples. All right, I've only written a few there. Thank you for all the examples. Those are brilliant. But these are all running costs for a business. Okay, so it's not just uh, I want to make shoes. I'm going to buy some leather to make some shoes, and then I'm going to make money. No, there's going to be costs to buy the leather to make the shoes. But if you really want to establish your business, you've got to think of all of these running costs for your business. And in managing your business, you want to try and keep these down to a minimum. Obviously, most of them are essential. Some are not so, uh, um, not too, you know, you can cut back on certain areas here, like vehicles you could cut back on maybe, but electricity, water, rent, um, salaries, those things you have to have in a business. So then the, you try your best to reduce these uh, running costs uh, to make sure that your business um, can make a higher profit. Okay, very good. So these are examples of running costs for your business. Okay. Now, in math literacy, when we look at <clears throat> business finance, we can look at both of these costs, the running costs and the production costs. Okay. Often they will tell you in a question that uh, you have a product that you're making, and this is the cost of the items that you need to make the product, which is your production costs. And then they will tell you that you also have to pay things like rent or electricity per month. All right. So in math literacy, we try to learn how to include both of these costs when working out a cost price. Okay. Now, the first example I've got here does not include running costs. This is purely production, only production costs here. And you guys are going to help me out with this one. All right. There's quite a bit of work to get done. But this is an example of how you can work out. Um, Okay, uh, can you still see the video feed? Uh, yes, I can. I'll just send Bianca right, prompts okay. on what to do. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, so we're going to work out here uh, the cost price of this this for this business that wants to make donuts. Okay, so the question one at the top, it says here, Determine the cost price per donut given the ingredient table below. So someone's got an ingredient list here for donuts. And they decided they want to start a, a business that, that sells donuts. But they want to know what the cost price will be to make a donut. Never mind the running costs of where your donut shop's going to be. Just the cost price of, of making a donut. Okay. So here we see the list of ingredients. Now, this is an actual uh, example of how you're going to do this. You guys are going to help me with this. So what we need to work out for all these ingredients here on the left, we've got flour, sugar, salts, yeast, margarine, milk, eggs, every, all kinds of things. Don't ask me why. Oh, yeah, you put that in the middle of the donut. Hey? Uh, all kinds of ingredients. We're going to work out how much do we have to pay for each of these ingredients to go into a batch of 24 donuts. Now, when I spoke to you about cost price, I said we need a price per unit or price per one unit okay price per one unit so we need one donut price so we're going to work out how much it costs to make 24 and then we're going to do something with that answer to find out how much it costs to make one donut okay so who can help me here with the first item in our list it says yeah let's look at it it says flour the quantity needed per batch up at the top quantity needed for one batch and one batch is 24 donuts all right the quantity for one uh, batch of 24 donuts and then it says uh, available size in the shops this is what you're actually going to buy in the shops because you need 960 grams for your uh, your batch you don't buy 960 grams in the shop you have to buy a one kg bag now, what does that mean? You have to pay more than you really should. Yeah, well, how much? How much is this 960 grams going to cost you? Who can tell me? How are we going to work out? If one kilogram costs 10 rand 50, how much will 960 grams of flour cost? Who's got a method for me? What can I do, ladies and gentlemen, to work out how much flour rand value I need for this batch? One kilogram OK, 
Okay, someone's coming up with a method there. Emmanuel is suggesting 10 round 50 times 9. Now, if you take 10 and 50 times 9, Emmanuel, you're going to get 9 kgs, eh? I think, which, oh, I see what you're doing. Are you trying to increase this batch to make it a huge batch? <clears throat> that looks like what you're doing because it's 10 and 50 for 1 kg. We don't need 1 kg. We just need 960 grams. Okay. So 960 grams is smaller than a kg. If we multiply this 10 and 50, we're going to get a lot of flour, and that's a lot of donuts. Okay. Katleha saying we should multiply as well. Okay. If we multiply, we're going to get a lot of flour, guys. Ah, by 0 0.96. Now, I like that. 0 0.960. So, Emmanuel's saying, so multiply the 250 by 0 0.960. Okay, so what he's done is he said, sir, I want to see how much of a kilogram that 960 is. So what he first said, uh, Emmanuel, correct me if I'm wrong, but you obviously said, I want to know how much of a kilogram this is. So he's divided the 960 by a thousand because there's a thousand grams in a kilogram. Okay, and he's saying, ah, that comes up to 0 0.960 kilograms. Okay, now one kilogram is 1050, but we don't have one kilogram. We just have 0.96 of a kilogram. So that we can multiply. Uh, very good. Yes, you guys are getting it. You guys are getting it now. All right, good. So I'm going to do exactly what Emmanuel has suggested. Thank you, Emmanuel. Um, and I'm going to multiply that 0 0.96. I'm going to shrink it a bit because we've got a lot to do here. If you guys... Uh, cannot see clearly enough, please tell me, all right? And then I'm going to take the 0, 0,960 and then multiply. I'm just going to write 96 instead of 960, and I'm going to multiply by 1050. Uh, let me move over. Just bear with me for a second. Move over so I can finish this off and see how much rand value. Oops, how many rands do I need for this flower? Sorry for jumping around so much. Scoot over a little bit. There we go. There we go. All right, so it's 0 0.9, 0 0.96 times 10 rand 50. All right, so it's a portion of a 10 rand. Oh, teacher Dale. multiply it's a portion of a 10 rand 50 bag okay it shouldn't be all the way to 10 rand 50 because it's almost a kg so it's almost 10 rand 50 so it's 10,08 okay so that's how much the flour is going to cost for this batch all right let's see the next one what do we have next we've got salt okay we've got salt right the second line is salt we need 16,5 grams but the salt comes in a 500 gram container and it's 329. Yikes, guys. 1080. Did I make a mistake? Did I write? Oh, guys, thank you. Thank you. All right. So here we go. Here's the next one. I've got salt. It's the next line here. This is it here. I've got 16,5 grams that I need for my recipe, but I have 500 grams in the shop that costs 3 rand 29. All right, Bianca. So we are working out the cost price of a donut because this recipe is for 24 donuts. And um, we're trying to work out how much it cost to make one donut, the cost price for a donut, if this batch is for 24. So we've got how much we need here in the middle column, quantity needed, and available prices and sizes in the shops. We're on the second line, which is salt. So we need 16,5 grams of salt for our recipe, but the shops only sells 500 gram bags at 3 rand 29. What math should I do to work out 
how much the salt's going to cost me. Okay. Who can tell me? Anybody have an idea? Well, think about it like this. <clears throat> uh, a 500 gram bag is 3 Rand 29. What portion of a 500 gram bag are we using? What math can we do to find out how, what portion, what part of a 500 gram bag we are using? So I need to take the 16,5 and this 500 grams and do something with it. I'm trying to work out how, what part or what portion of 500 grams is 16,5. What math should I do with that? Those two numbers. Anybody, guys? Anybody out there have an idea? Um, Paul, is, you've, you've got the right idea. Do you need to divide? But you would just switch those numbers around. Okay, so Paul's got the right idea here. And Paul's saying, sir, to work out how much 16,5 grams is out of 500 grams, how much this is, you've got to put them over each other and divide like that. Okay, but the 16,5 will come first. Um, yes, Darren, absolutely. It's a yeah, Sonia, it's tiny. It's tiny. Okay, I'm going to show the number, Darren. Um, so, yes, you will multiply from here, but I'm going to show the number first. Okay, so 16,5 out of 500 grams. That's what we need for our recipe. Okay, I'm going to show the value here. So it's tiny, like Sonia's like, sir, is it really that small? Yeah, it's very small. It's 0 0.033. Okay, and then that, Darren, we will multiply by the 3 rand 29. Okay, so I'm going to write it out in full so we can all see 0 0.033. Okay, and then we need to multiply this by, uh, I'll put a full stop there and multiply this by the rand value. Okay, so times 3 rand 29. What are we getting, guys and girls? What are we getting? 0, 0,033 times 3 rand 29. Let's, let's times it out here. Times 3 rand 29 and 0, 0,10857. 0, 0,10857 rands. It's not even rands, it's cents. It's zero rands and 10 cents with some decimals. Now we do two decimal places. So I'm going to look at the second decimal place, which is a zero on my calculator and say, will that zero change to anything else? With an eight behind it, the zero will become a one. So I'm writing off to two decimal places here and saying zero comma one one rands. Okay, yes, not only there we go. Just writing off to two decimals as we go. All right. Are there any questions? I saw a hand go up, but I think it went down. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to the next one. I think we hit coming up with a method here, guys. Oh, all right, let's have a look. Sugar. We've got sugar. All right, Tundo, stay with us. Stay with us. We're going to do a couple more. And it'll start making sense as we go. All right, I've got sugar in my recipe. I need 100 grams of sugar, but the shop only sells me sugar in a one kg bag which costs 969. So the 100 grams of sugar that I need for my recipe, how many rands is that? Okay, now if you looked at the first one when we did 960 grams and one kg for flour, I think we should use a similar method here. We've got 100 grams and one kg for sugar. I think we should stick with the manual suggestion there and follow the exact same method that he did. All right, yes. Okay, you guys are getting it now. Okay, so it's, uh, oh, let me shrink the previous calculation. I'm going to shrink these as I go because there's not much space. So I have to shrink stuff. Okay, I don't know. You guys wish you could do stuff like this in class or in the exam, make space. All right. Let's shrink that one down. Okay, so let's make space here. So we've got 100 grams 
out of a thousand grams or one kilogram. All right, which gives us zero comma one uh, kilograms. All right, a hundred grams out of a thousand grams, which is one kilogram, is zero comma one kilograms. Okay, we need to take this zero comma one and multiply by the rand value, like Emmanuel originally suggested, and get zero comma nine six nine rands. Okay, now I'm writing this off. So the six here should become a seven, guys. Are you happy with that? So zero comma nine seven. All right, we're running off as we go. One kg. Yes. A thousand grams is one kg. Yes. So stay with me. So the first fraction I did is I took 100 grams out of 1,000 grams because 1,000 grams is 1 kg. I said, how much is 100 grams out of 1,000? It's 0, 0,1. So 100 grams is 0, 0,1 kilograms. Then I take my 0, 0,1 kilograms and I times it by 960 and I only get 0, 0,97. Okay, yes. All right, I'm using your method, Emmanuel. All right. Um, okay, so that is the... Was it the sugar? I think that was the sugar. Let's check again. That was the sugar. All right, now we've got yeast, and you know yeast is tiny. Okay. Oh, easy. We need one packet. He bars one packet. No calculation needed. Thank goodness. All right, it's two and nineteen. We need we need one packet. He bars one packet. Or she bars one packet. No calculation needed. All right, margarine. Who wants to do margarine? You guys should be. Uh, doing these as we go. So I need 60 grams of margarine for my recipe, but I can only buy 500 grams of margarine at 13 Rand 89. Ah, oh, Sonia is always fast. Okay. All right. So I need to know how much out of 500 grams, how much of 500 grams is 60 grams? So I'm going to say 60 out of, let me shrink the 219 while you guys are busy calculating there. Let me shrink things. All right, you guys. Yes, there we go. That's a tsunami. All right, so we're going to say 60, 60 out of 500. How much is that? All right, 60 out of 500. So 60 out of 500 is 0 0.12. All right, there's a decimal, 0 0.12. Okay, I need 0 0.12 of a 500 gram block of margarine. So I need 0, 0,12, I'm going to write it here now, 0, 0,12 times the price of a 500 gram margarine, which is 13 Rand and 89. Okay. So 0, 0,12 times 13 Rand 89, 1, 666668. Check the second decimal, 1,6. Six, the second six will become a seven because the six behind it is a bigger than five. So I'm going to say one comma six, seven rands. You guys all with me? Yes, there we go. All right, we're getting it now, guys. We're getting it now. Okay, next line. What's next? Milk. I've got 400 milliliters, but I've got one liter, which costs 659 rand. All right, so we're going to do what we originally suggested with the first question. When we have grams and kilograms, <clears throat> we're going to change one of them to the other. Okay, so I suggest we work with the milliliters. So I'm going to say one liter. Look at your one liter here of milk is how many milliliters of milk? One liter is how many milliliters? Milliliters. Everyone should be frantically typing into chat there. One liter is how many milliliters? Everyone should be typing in 1,000 
milliliters. All right. Yes, 1,000 milliliters. Good. Yes, very good. Well done, Lisa Pandeka. All right, so we've got 400. Everyone yeah, should be doing this calculation. 400 out of 1,000 milliliters. All right, which is 0, 0,4. All right, so it's 0, 0,4 of a liter. All right. And I'm going to say 0, 0,4 of a liter. And each liter is 659. But I've only got 0, 0,4 of a liter, so 659. So 0 0.4 times 659. And that gives us 2,636. The second decimal is a 3. 2,63, the second decimal 3 will have to change to a 4, so 2,64. 2,64. All right. Let's see what's next. Guys, I hope you're okay. I hope you're all well. Okay. All right, Tando, uh, Kia's going to help you now. Tando, you raise your hand. You're talking about your screen. All right, Tando, Kia's going to... Uh, uh, Tando, you there? Tando, you there? All right, Tando struggling to connect there. Um, all right, let's do the last three and then let's work out the cost price of this um, batch of donuts. I'm interested to know how much one donut is going to cost. All right, we've got two eggs, but a box of six costs 10 99 Who can help me out? This should be an easier one. 3.63. Sonia. Uh, now, le 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 this is um, an interesting question. In fact, I'm contradicting myself while I'm doing this question here because in the past, I always told you guys, you should only run off at the end of the question. Okay, so in fact, when we're going through here, I'm chopping off things as we go. It's naughty. It shouldn't be doing that. You should be keeping all the decimals as we go. So I'm contradicting my normal um, recommendations when you're doing a question, all right? It's because this is such a long question, I'm chopping off and making it simple as we go for tonight. But usually I tell people that when you're in a question and there's quite a few steps involved, don't chop the decimal off until right at the end of the question. Because if you keep chopping things, you see we've got like six items that we've done, yeah? We're chopping bits off, little pieces, tiny little pieces. Maybe they don't make a difference in the end, but sometimes they can. So if you keep chopping little things away um, and rounding off during the question, you could lose accuracy in the end. But uh, tonight, I'm just uh, making it simple. Try not to round off during a question. Try always round off at the end of a question. Okay. All right. So for eggs, uh, Sonia's got a price for eggs there. Um, Sonia, how did you get this? How did you get this, Sonia? Where are you? Come on now. You've got to explain to us. Sonia's got answers. Yolanda's got answers, but I don't I don't see how you guys are getting these. You've got to explain to me, guys. You've got to let me know. <coughs> Sonia, you there? Thanks, sir. How are you doing? I'm all right, Sonia, sir. Good, thanks. How did you get your answer? So I used the same method. Tell me. I said two over six. All right, so we got two over six. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool, Sonia. I'm going to use the exact same thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sonia's like, said, come on, keep going. Use the same method. All right, guys. I'm going to have to quickly close this and then pop it out again. Just bear with me. Hold on a second. My gremlins are working tonight. It's going to come on any moment now. Just bear with me for a second.
Yeah. All right. So here we go. So two out of six. All right. We need two out of six, and that'll give us a third or 0 0.33333 recurring. We're not going to write that like that. Okay. Let's just write a third. And we need a third of the price of six. So a third times 10 Rand 99. And that gives us, all right, let's say one over three. One over three times 10 Rand 99. And that will give us 3,663. All right, so the second decimal six is not going to change. So 3,66 is enough. All right, you guys should be looking at the next one. Okay, so apricot jam. Uh, let's have a look over here. Um, we need 110 grams, but they only sell it in 900 grams. Okay, we're going to complete the same method. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Make it a little bit neater and remove this nonsense here. Okay. Sorry, guys, I'm going to zoom out again now. Hold on a second. Okay, there we go. It's the second to last line. All right, second to last line there. We need 110 grams of apricot jam. They only sell it at 900, so you guys can do it. I'll do it with you. That gives us 0 0.122. All right, so I'm going to say 0 0.12. Okay, and then I'm going to move over here, and then I'm going to multiply 0 0.12 by the 1599. All right, so 0 0.12 times 1599. 1,91188. So the second decimal one, I'm going to change to a two, so 1,92. All right. One comma nine two. All right, are you guys also getting that? Excellent. Okay, excellent, 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 excellent. All right, Oliver King, let's check a look. Maybe you didn't round off this number here. Let's try that out. Let's put in all the twos and see what we get. One comma nine five. All right, this is actually very interesting. This is actually very interesting. Okay, so this is a prime example, guys. All right, so we've got some people saying 1,92 and some people saying 1,95. Okay, let me write this on the screen so you can see. I'm going to do it in a different color. So when we did this fraction here, we got a decimal of 0, 0,12. Now, this decimal I actually chopped off. If I go back up and show you the calculation, there it is there. So there it is in the calculator. 110 divided by 900 is 0, 0,12222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222222
at the end, which is frustrating. Who wants to write out that huge long number? No one, especially if you're writing, if you're showing all your calculations. Okay. All right. Um, the last one. Here we go. We've got oil. 250 mils we need. 750 mils we got. Okay. So we're going to say 250 over 750. This is milliliters. Milliliters. This will give us two thirds. All right. I'm going to say two thirds of the price, which is 13.59. Okay, so two divided by three times thirteen fifty-nine, and that gives us nine oh six. No, two thirds of thirteen Rand fifty-nine is nine Rand and six cents. We all getting that? Four and eight. What have I done wrong? All right, let's check just check it there guys i've got 250 mils i'm gonna just write this again because it's not very clear 250 mils that i need out of 750 all right if i do that on a calculator 250 over 750 whoopsie over 750 you see oh my apologies guys i'm dreaming tonight it's one third the wrong third it's the one third not the other third not the second one, it's a yes, it's the first one. So it's a third, not two of these thirds. Multiply that by 1359. Thank you guys for the correction. All right, four and fifty-three. You guys are on the ball. All right, finally, we've got the last items price here. Now, what we need to do is well, what do we need to do with all this? What do we need to do with all this? Yes, Angel. Angel's gonna tell us. So I think you should add all the amounts. Yes, I think we should too, Angel. Absolutely. All these values that I'm underlining here, I need to add them all up. All right, I need to add them all up. And I'm sure in chat, yes, everyone is saying the same as you. Thank you, Angel. All right, let's add them all up. Now, be careful. There's a lot of numbers. As you've seen, human error can creep in. So watch me as I do it. 10 Rand 80 plus 0 0.11 plus 0 0.97 plus 2 Rand 19 uh, plus 1,67 plus 2,64 plus 3,66 plus 1,92 plus 4,53. That should be it. It's on the screen there if you guys want to do it as well. That is the total price to make 24 donuts. 24 donuts. All right, so I'm going to put you at the bottom. 26 and 3 cents. Ooh, I'm getting 28.49. Let me do it again. Let me do it again. All right, let's try it again. Human error can creep in. There's a lot of numbers. So 10 Rand 80. Watch as I do it. Plus 0 0.11, plus 0 0.97, plus 2 Rand 19, plus 1 Rand 67, plus 2 Rand 64, plus 3 Rand 66, plus 1 Rand 92, plus 4 Rand 53. 2849. All right, 2849. Oh, guys, why are we getting different answers? 26 rand 30. One, do we count the items? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I eight, think, nine. I think they're forgetting to add the two rand and 19 cents. Oh, uh, yeah, the it's, it's hidden. Yeast. Yeah, it's hidden yeah. there. Don't forget that. Okay, so one packet of yeast, we only need one packet. It's 2 Rand 19. Don't forget that. Okay, so that gives us 28 Rand 49. All right, so our total here is 28 Rand 49. What now? What do I do now, guys? Remember the story? 
This is a recipe for a batch of 24 donuts. What do I need to do now? Twenty-eight rand forty-nine for forty. Sorry, for twenty-four donuts. Multiply. Do we need to divide by twenty-four? Yes, we need to divide by twenty-four. How much is it for one? Cut the twenty-eight rand forty-nine, which is twenty-four donuts, into two, sorry, it's twenty-four donuts. So cut it up into twenty-four pieces to find out how much it is for one. All right. So here we go. Twenty-eight rand forty-nine and divide that by twenty-four. One, one comma one eight seven zero eight. One comma one eight seven zero eight. If I round this off, that'll be one comma one nine. Okay, very good, guys. Well done. All right, so we have an idea here now of a price for making one donut okay so in the shop you go out and you buy all the ingredients your ingredients won't come up to this price here your ingredients will be more because you're always buying more than what you need but sometimes three times four times more than what you need all right so you're not going to pay 28.49 exactly at the shop for this recipe you're going to pay a lot more but it costs you 28.49 to make 24 so each donut with a 24 in a batch will be one rand and 19 cents. Okay. Now, what do you do with this information? As a person that wants to start a donut company, this is very important for you. You need to know how much it costs you to, to make one donut. Now, as a businessman, what do you do with this value now? Who can tell me? All right, someone tells you, guess what? It's going to cost you 119. Emmanuel. Good evening. Evening, Emmanuel. How are you? He disappeared. Oh, no. He disappeared. He's back. There he is. Yes, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, what you have to do is you have to check how much you're going to need to make a profit or how much you're going to sell to make a profit. Okay. So how much are you going to sell for to make a profit? So this is a, a cost price. You're not talking about a selling price, eh? Am I right, Emmanuel? You're talking about the selling price now. All right, so make sure there's profit. Sonia says, well, make sure there's profit. Okay, guys, so we're going to talk about profit the next couple of lessons. Um, Mr. C was saying we need to start budgeting. Okay, yes, we need to start budgeting. All right. Excuse me. But once we have this price here, the next step, like Emmanuel was saying, is from here, we can start figuring out how much profit we can make. We cannot know how much profit we're going to make if we sell a donut, if we don't know our cost price. So the cost price calculation is actually very, very, very important. It is your starting point in trying to work out if your business is going to make money. Now, remember, this is production cost. Okay, all right, yeah. This is the production cost, the cost to produce. We haven't even talked about electricity in this price. All these things, all right? How much it costs to bake the donuts with electricity. We haven't even talked about that. So those costs are also going to come into play and will be needed to be added to this production cost for our actual proper uh, cost price of the donut. But this price that we've got here is a starting point. If we exclude all the running costs that we could possibly have, then we could take this and then say, let's add on something, all right, and start to make profit. If it was just only about the ingredients, 
and no running costs. If you're, if you, if you said to your mom or dad, listen, yeah, guys, I want to start a business. And they're like, well, you can use our equipment for free. Your only costs will be your production costs. Then this is the cost that you will only pay. But you know, in your own business one day, you're going to have to pay electricity. You will have to pay rent. You'll have to pay all these other costs. And you'll have to do a similar calculation to this um, and work out a unit price for each thing. Okay. So how much does it, how much electricity does it cost or does it take to um, cook one donut? And then work out a RAND value for how much electricity you're using to cook a donut. And then work and add that running cost onto your production cost for a final total cost. Okay, so this cost that we see here, 119, is just for production. In this scenario, we are we excluding running costs here. Okay, and you guys are all shouting at me saying, sir, start uh, talking about the profit now. Okay, now when we talk about profit, we're going to talk about it a little bit more next time. You must be reminded that the formula is profit equals your selling price minus your cost price. Okay. And we know what the cost one is now, but we need to figure out a selling one. Now, Emmanuel was saying, sir, work out how much profit you want to make. Can you guys please give me an estimate of how much profit you would like to make on one round 19 if you were selling donuts? Who can give me an estimate? Come on, all you business people out there. How much should we add onto one round nineteen to start making profit? Abel. <laughs> you guys are playing games now, man. <laughs> You're being silly now. Five rand. Two rand fifty. Okay, Sonia's coming down. Two rand fifty. Do I have two rand? Anyone got two rand? Five rand. I don't know. Is five rand too much? Three rand? I see three rand fifty. I see one rand fifty. Okay, we've got to getting some ideas here. Two rand. How would we know, ladies and gentlemen? How would we know what is okay and what isn't okay? Where should we look to find out what is okay? Profit maximization. Yes, that is maximum profit. Um, how do we find out what is okay? I mean, I'd like to put a hundred rand on that, maybe. I'd like to make a lot of money. Um, where do we find out what's okay, what to add on there? Emmanuel, what do you think? So what I think is that you can check your competitors, check how much they're pricing their, their, their things around, and then that's how you can check how much you can also price yours to be at a profit. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Emmanuel. So if, you, if no one knows what the going price is for a donut, then maybe 15 Rand or 5 Rand, Sonia's original estimate, is not bad at all. But if everyone's selling their donuts at 2 Rand 50, then maybe you should be very careful about what your donut price is. Okay, so once you have your cost price and you want like, oh, okay, cool, I know what it costs me now. I want to add profit on and make money. Hold on, go and check what everyone else is selling stuff at. Um, selling stuff at and this is where um the world market is such an interesting thing because we all know that china is a very big producing uh, country they they keep their costs very low sure their costs are very low people can't compete with them all right so certain people can really um make a product very cheaply and outprice everyone else. maybe not the best quality Maybe we can start talking about quality as quality and paying more a better idea. All right, check the background. Yes, and I'll be good. Check the background of the buyers and think about the price. Remember your profit and the money you spend it to buy your products. Good. That's good. A good investigation. Well done, Salome. All right. So a very interesting exercise. You guys will do something like this when you own a business one day. Even if it's for a service, you will be working things out like this. How much does it cost me to get this product or service out? All right. Now, the next time we're going to do this is we're actually going to look at um, incorporating some running costs into the calculation. <clears throat> it's, a, it's an exam type question, and uh, it incorporates a little bit of running costs, not too much, into the calculation to try and help us work out how much is it going to cost to produce a, a product, okay, a cost price. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we're gonna call it a night now. We're gonna give you the poll link. No quiz tonight, just the poll link. And then we are going to send you off to get a warm beverage. If they can, they should grab a donut. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. A donut would be nice. Good night, Emmanuel. Um, we have a raised hand from Tando. There we go. Tando, you there? Good day, sir. How are you? Yes, I'm yes. I'm good. Good. As I'm thinking, man, people must check their things before they we can start business. You're right. Also, There's a also the, the there's a also lot of a, target. sorry carry on yes you carry on also they take it people who can afford and some of them they cannot afford say you're right buy the, the, the. you're right thank you say it, oh. it's a very good so market research is very very important who is your market uh can they afford um can they afford to uh, to purchase your item? Katlejo, uh, are you there? Hello, sir. How are you? Good news, sir. Good. I'm good news, sir. What can I do for you? Um, uh, uh, I was I was going to add on what Tantra said. Yes, yes, please. I think the business um, should use. Um, the demand and supply have to, to, to determine their prices before consumers come to buy. Yeah. You're because, right. um, as, yeah, as for the business, there are, there are price takers. Yeah. 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 So, so supply and demand is another thing that you need to also think about. Um, you, you obviously have competitors that you're competing against, but if there aren't enough people in the market, then all yeah. the people that you're yeah. doing, all the people that are selling donuts can actually put their prices up because there's such a huge demand. So everyone can put their prices up and should put their prices up and they will still sell donuts. Yes, absolutely. So supply and demand is also something to consider. There's so many things hey, to think about when you run a business. So think very carefully. Uh, like you guys have mentioned, you need to do a lot of work. This is a little bit of what you need to do. Um, but I hope all of you are thinking about maybe opening a business one day because it's a good idea. It's a very good idea and you're creating jobs while you're doing it. And we need lots of those in our country. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call it a night.